Okay, I'd like to show you how to use an ActiveX slider control to vary numbers in Excel. Um, this sort of thing. Here I've got a graph. I haven't really named it yet. Uh, the sine wave, and I can control it by varying some properties. I'm plotting some data over here uh, that makes up this sine wave. And I have sliders that change numbers. You see, as I slide this slider up and down, it changes the offset value, the vertical height. When it's in the middle, the offset's about nothing, or very close to zero, and the sine wave is uh, centered at zero. If I raise this up to, well, five, now the sine wave, you can see, uh, goes from five up, and then below five, and above five. So this is the offset. Here's the amplitude, which is the height of the wave. And I can vary from zero to two. And the frequency of the wave here, or something like it, as I increase it, the uh, frequency gets higher or the wavelength gets shorter. We don't need to concern ourselves much about the math behind this, only the fact that we have these very uh, charming little uh, graphical slider controls and we can use them to modify numbers uh, to provide an alternate form of a user input instead of just typing a number into a box. Let me show you how to make this happen, uh, just in general. So let's say what I want is to have a, a slider that changes a number from 0 to 90 because it's, uh, it's an angle that I want to change from 0 to 90. First of all, we need to uh, insert the slider control. And to do that, you need the developer tab. By default, the developer tab is turned off. So if yours is off, to turn it on for the first time and, and then just leave it on from now on, go to File, go to Options, and under Customize Ribbon, just ensure the developer tab here is turned on. Next time you launch Excel, it'll still be on. So in here, again, there's lots and lots of things in here that we're not going to be too concerned about for the time being. Rather, we want to insert a control. And you have form controls and ActiveX controls. Again, we're not going to get bogged down in exactly what that means. The only one that we're interested in is this one right here, the ActiveX scroll bar control. And when you select that, uh, you're going to essentially be able to draw a rectangle, and the rectangle will contain uh, a scroll bar. Um, so let's do that. If you want to make it a horizontal one, just make the control horizontal. And this is what you get. Notice that when we inserted that, it automatically put us in design mode. Design mode means that when you click on this control, you can move it and resize it and otherwise edit this thing. And when you turn design mode off, now you can operate the control. And at the moment, you can slide it, you can operate it, but it doesn't actually do anything. So you need to get back in the design mode and right click on it and choose properties. Or you could have just chosen uh, this properties button and you get this list of, of all of these properties. There's only a few that concern us. The main one is the linked cell. Right now it's blank. In here, put the reference to the cell where you want a number to go. Let's put in H3 right here. You can't just click like you could if you're doing um, uh, creating an equation. You actually have to type H3 in this box. By default, this numerical control goes from a minimum of 0 to a maximum. You might think the maximum would be 10 or 100 or something. No, no. The maximum value is 32,767. If we turn this off now, and go out of design mode, that's what we get. As we control this slider, you see this value, H4 changes, and it goes from zero all the way up to 32,767. And these are integers. There's no decimals here. That's the range. That number seems odd, uh, unless you realize that 32,767 is actually two to the power of 15 one. Uh, it's, it's a binary number. It's a 16-bit binary number. 32767 is the biggest number you can represent with just 16 zeros and ones. In a, briefly, that's, that's why that number is what it is. Well, okay, but what I said is I want to control an angle that goes from 0 to 90. So shouldn't I have made this maximum value 90? And then just, just use it directly. Well, the trouble with doing that is, I mean, it works. But what if you want an angle of uh, something fractional, right? 
the, the limitation of this control is the number that it represents are all integers. So if you want fine control, if you want to go from 0 to 90 in as tiny a step as you possibly can, well, you need to make this a scaled value. You kind of can't. So instead, go to design mode, go back into properties of this thing, make its maximum 32, 7, 6, 7, or just leave it like that before, as it was before. And um, so this is what we get, 0 to 32, 7, 6, 7. So this represents the greatest flexibility, the greatest range of this control. Use it to scale the number. Over here, if I put in cell A1, let's put a reference to this number divided by 32767. Note what we get now is that cell varies from 0 to 1, or 100%, and anywhere in between. About halfway gives you about 0.5. Well, I don't want it to go from 0 to 1. I want it to go from 0 to 90. Okay, so let's take this equation and modify it. Remember, this quantity varies from 0 to 1 as you operate the slider. Let's take that and multiply it by the full scale, 90. Look what we get now. We get continuous adjustment from 0 to 90 in tiny, tiny steps. You can't quite control the steps, right? Each one change, if I click this arrow, you see that value is going down by a very small amount. That small amount is basically 90 divided by whatever, 90 divided by 32767. There's two ways to move this slider, or three ways. One is to just drag it directly. And if you want to get it exactly somewhere, you, you sort of can't. But you can also click ahead of it. And you see it as I click on the slider on the right of that slider control, you see the uh, the value in H4 is going up one at a time 28 29 30 or you can click on the arrow and do the same thing so clicking on the arrow or clicking in this space at the moment they both do the same thing they increase this by one but in the properties you can change what those incremental values are go into design mode go into the properties of this thing and you see there's something called a, um, a small change is one and a large change is also one let's change it let's make it so that the large change is oh, let's say 50 I'll leave the small change at one and then close this go out of design mode and again now I can still just drag the slider manually but if I click ahead you see it's changing the value by 50 and when I click the arrows so the arrows give you the small change in this case one at a time and clicking in the space gives you the big change of 50. So this lets me move that slider in kind of a controlled fine way, up or down. And this does it even finer. It's kind of like this is sort of coarse tuning, and this is sort of medium fine tuning, and this is sort of very fine tuning. Notice that with the scaling, if I want this number to be exactly 45, bang on 45 using this control, I sort of can't have that. I can get it as close to 45 manually as I can, say there, and then use these fine controls for getting it really close but 45.000 isn't really one of the options as it turns out. That's sort of the price you pay when you use this sort of a control. If you just type in the cell 45, of course, you break the link with this um, uh, with this control. Uh, so I hope this helps. It's not that common a thing to have to do, but when you do need uh, to, to play what if games and vary some numbers, uh, maybe you agree that using this sort of a control is not too difficult to do, and it's a nice alternative to just typing numbers into a box.